Hello, my name is Juliana, um, and I'm here to talk about gate 17 or gene key, or not gate 17, gate 57, sorry, or gene key 57. Um, I'm a registered therapeutic counselor, a student of the gene keys, a quantum human design specialist, and I just love putting together the mysteries of the world. I also love stories and the power of archetypes. And as I'm moving through um, doing these videos on these gene keys right now, they're all linked to the spleen, the last three that I've done. They're all linked to the spleen, which is all to do with fear. And it just really makes me reflect on, on this idea that sometimes we spend this time in our human bodies thinking that there's something wrong with us, right? Like, I'm so afraid, I'm in scarcity, um, I'm judging someone, I don't know what to do, I'm feeling anxious, I'm feeling depressed. And the thing is, is that we are all connected to our physical environment and to all of the other people on this planet, right? It's, it's, our, it's our collective consciousness energy. And when we are looking at emotions or experiences like fear, this is a consciousness resonance. And what happens for me as I look at these and we look at the archetypes, we start to see that it's not just about us, right? That this is happening outside too. And so when we begin to shift what's happening within us, we then start to shift the collective consciousness. And this is why this, um, the archetypes of the gene keys, which are, and the, and the gates in human design, which are related to the I Ching, um, are such an ancient tool for this archetypal medicine available to us. So let's dive into gate 57 or gene key 57. So we'll start with the human design side and then we'll move to the gene keys. So the gate name for gate 57 is intuitive clarity or instinct. And it is in the spleen and it connects, this is a really powerful gate because it connects to the throat, to the G center and to the sacral center. And this gate is really about learning how to trust your gut. It's also associated with um, intuitive abilities, clairaudience and being psychic. And what it's teaching us is that everything that you need to know is right here for you in this present moment. And it's about learning to tell the difference between your instinct and a projected fear of the future. So let's move on to the gene keys. So the, in the gene keys, we move from the shadow to the gift to the city. I'm going to talk about the shadow and the gift today. So the shadow is the shadow of unease. And if you think about that word, you just think about unease, like when you say, I feel uneasy, it's this uncertainty and this fear about what we don't know what might be coming, right? It's like, it's like we, we become uncertain and it's like, we're trying to project into the future of, oh no, what's coming towards us? And that unease really starts to um, rear its ugly head when we begin to try to make our decisions from our minds. Because our minds are really intelligent and our minds are here to understand and grasp big concepts and hold inspiration and be this like receiver of divine knowledge and to put different puzzle pieces together. That's why I love my mind with the gene keys and human design because it helps me link everything together as, as well along with all the stuff that I know around psychology and ecosystems. Like I love that. That's what my mind does. But our world has conditioned us to make decisions from the mind. And that's not the mind's job. And so what happens is that our instinct, our spleen, our nervous system, is here to keep us safe 
in the moment. The instinct, the splenic nature, the, the nature of the spleen is to have in the moment truth about what's going on. And then it chooses a direction, it chooses a, um, a reaction based on what it's feeling in the body. But what happens is that our mind overrides that. And so then our mind is trying to do the job of the spleen or the nervous system. And, well, it doesn't do the best job because that's not its job, right? It's The mind is seeking to find safety through planning and external structures and resources, like having a certain number in your bank account and... Um, following the news and making sure you're prepared in a certain way, right? And the thing is, is that this shadow of anis is really based in the nervous system, in the spleen. And this fear, right? If you think of unease, I mean, the last two and a half years have been filled with it, right? And so this fear, this uneasiness, is constantly being broadcasted throughout the collective consciousness in the bodies of all of us humans. And it's this uneasiness of what's going to come and then doing all the things possible to plan for all of those potentials. Meanwhile, we we don't know what's coming and so then our bodies and then our minds perpetuate this feeling of unease because then we because then they realize well i actually don't know what's happening but our bodies do and so on one side of this shadow it's where we become hesitant and it's like when that intuitive hit that we get from the splenic authority or from your spleen or just that intuition, like you hear, like it's like you, the clear audience, right? It's like, oh, I know this. But what happens when, it, when we're hesitant is that gets suppressed or overridden by the mind. And the body knows what's correct, but the mind um, dismisses it. And then we hesitate and become trapped by our worries. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, this shadow of an ease can become really impulsive. And it's this reaction that tries to ease the fear by making quick decisions that are not made from physical body knowing clarity, but rather by the fear. And reactive decision will often cause more turmoil than to help ease the fear. So... As we move from unease into the gift of intuition, intuition is your body's direct connection with the outer world. And it's how we hear, right? Because this in, uh, in human design, this is related to um, Claire audience, hearing what the next right decision is to move forward. And this really takes um, a receptive state of being because the voice of this of intuition of this gene key of the spleen is gentle and subtle and it can be challenging to hear over the loud mind and I can speak to this from experience because I I have I'm have the gate 57 defined in my human design chart and I have spent up until the last couple of years in a consistent state of unease what's going to happen what's going to happen and then the last two years it's been this real calling for me to trust my in the moment knowing I also have my spleen defined and so when I discovered my human design type and when I started exploring the gene keys it was really this um, push for me to get out of my head and drop into my body and my intuition and attune my ears to the gentle, subtle voice of my intuition. And we think of this receptive state of being, it's, um, we, when we think of receptivity, it's more of that feminine type energy of, of allowing. And our world, um, 
is in this process of, I believe, moving from a outward, let's make things happen to a more masculine state of being to a balance between the masculine and the feminine state of being. And so when we start to tap into our intuition, when we slow down and when we attune to our inner voice, we actually help usher in the more balance of the world that is that is being called for right now. And so in order to trust our intuition, we need to start by deconditioning this belief that we're separate from life, that we're separate from the trees, that we're separate from the earth, that we're separate from other people, that we're, we're separate from the sky and the stars and the rain and the sun. Because the truth is, is that we're all connected. And we're receiving information, our bodies are through our senses, are picking up on information all the time. And everything that is here on this planet is here to work with us. And so we do this by beginning to practice tuning into our sensitivities. And we need we need to do we need to do this by giving our sensitivity airtime which in itself can be challenging in a world that undervalues and often condemns or shames sensitivity, right? I know I heard it. You're too sensitive. You're too emotional. Oh, why are you thinking about that? Just do this, right? And the truth is, is that the sensitivity is incredibly important for us to tap into our intuition. So like all the fear, it's important to walk through it in order to transcend it. And we might do that path many, many times because there's many different layers of fear or it's like a spiral and we return to it again. And so as you beginning, as you begin listening and practicing to trust your intuition, to honor your intuition, you begin to hold higher frequency states in your body. So how do we give our sensitivity airtime? One of my favorite ways to do it is to find a safe person to talk to where you can just allow everything out that may be inside. You can share about your unease. If you don't have a safe person to talk to, get a journal and just start allowing yourself to express your sensitive nature. Um, moving your body, going for a walk um, in nature without earplugs in, without a phone, so that your senses begin to feel the rhythm of the forest or the trees or the ocean around you. Another really good way to do it is by walking on, on uh, with bare feet in the grass or on the sand. Um, Another way is to, one of my favorite ways to do this actually, is to lie down um, with my legs up the wall. So I scooch my bum to the edge of a wall and I bring my legs up and it's kind of, it's an inversion in yoga. And then I put one hand on my heart and one hand on my stomach and I close my eyes. And I just notice, right? When we attune to our sensitivity, we begin noticing what's going on inside. We begin noticing our breath. We begin noticing maybe vibrations in the body or how our ears hear certain sounds. So as you begin tapping into your sensitivity, that then begins to turn on your intuition. And when we turn on our intuition, when we allow our intuition that space and time, it's this knowledge that fear isn't inside you. Because real fear, right? Because there is, there, is there is a benefit to fear, not real fear. All fear is real. But that when we feel fear in the moment when our body goes, don't eat that food, or don't answer the phone, or... Um, walk that way down the street or 
don't leave your house yet, leave in 15 minutes, right? That type of oh, inner knowing that, oh, maybe I'm not going to do that, or that doesn't feel good for me right now. That fear is this right relationship with fear where you're trusting the, this isn't good for me right now, and I'm going to listen, right? And then we start to move forward knowing and trusting our intuition and our body that's going to tell us the truth about fear because fear is all based on this vibrational frequency that is in the world and so while while you transcend this while you move through this while you integrate this you're going to come into vibrational fear frequencies that are not yours, that are not coming from your nervous system that's giving you a cue, that are not coming from your intuition by your clear audience, right? And as you tap more into the intuition, you might be, be picking up on little thoughts that drop in that are so quiet that you maybe not be able to hear them. And this is as you this is the ability that you're picking up on these vibrations that are in your auric field, that are in the world, that are there for you to access at any time. So I really, I really love this, um, I really love this gate because it's very familiar to me, this gene key. It's very familiar to me because I have I move on that spiral level from unease to intuition. The city is, is wisdom and perhaps I have, uh, or is it wisdom? No, I think I, I got that uh, wrong there. Sorry. Disregard that. But it's this, it's this interesting spiral of moving from unease to right, I'm trusting my intuition and then life happens and I'm in an intuitive flow and then it's like I walk through a fear frequency or I'm triggered by my own limiting beliefs and then it's like, oh, here I go again. I need to move through this unease. I need to support my body. I need to get quiet. I need to listen. I need to hear my body and then I tap back in to my intuition and then I keep moving forward in my life trusting that my body is going to give me all that I need and I'm going to know what I need to know when I need to know it. So I really hope that was helpful. Um, I really appreciate you watching and listening. If um, I invite you, if you feel called to like, share, subscribe with anyone. Um, and again, thank you so much. This brings me so much joy to be able to talk about the Gene Keys.